Hello viewers, welcome back. So far, this summer has not been nearly as productive as I wanted it to be. Or rather, I've been too productive, what with work, preparing to transfer to a different college, and getting ready for the annual convention I go to. Real life has really cut into my anime time. But now, the convention just ended on Sunday, I've got about a month before the new semester starts, and I'm excited to deal with my post-con depression by just submerging myself in anime and manga. So, moving on. Fair warning, there are a few characters I'd like to discuss in detail, but story-wise I don't plan to go into any major spoilers. La Corda de Oro is the story of a girl named Kahoko Hino. At the start of this story, she's just a regular teenager, but she goes to a very special school. Seiso Academy is split in two. There's the general education half, where Kahoko is a student, and then the other half is a music school, where students have to audition to get in and generally come from wealthier, sometimes famous, families. There is usually very little interaction between the two halves, and you can see throughout little instances of prejudices from both sides. Basically, the gen ed students think the music students are uppity, and the music students do kind of look down on the gen ed students. Anyway, every few years, the music school holds a competition amongst its best musicians. Technically, gen ed students are allowed to audition too, but they never get selected. Until now. Right before the selections are revealed, Kahoko meets a fairy who's been wandering at the school, trying to find someone who can see him. He tells her he's a music fairy, and his mission is to spread joy through the power of music. He rewards her for being able to see him by giving her a magic violin and making sure she's selected as the sixth competitor. And actually, this brings us to one aspect of this story that I felt they could have expanded on a little. The very first chapter of La Corda opens with a tale of a man who traveled to Japan with a dream of opening a music school. The man saved a fairy, who then vowed to help him with his dream. And this tale is never really brought up again. We can probably assume that Lily either is that fairy or is a descendant of that fairy, and the people running Say So Academy during the time of our story seem to know something of the school's origin. It's never specified how long ago exactly this occurred. Kahoko, who's never played an instrument in her life, isn't thrilled about competing at first, but the principal tells her she can't withdraw. And at the end of the competition, the teacher in charge of organizing it all says something that suggests he's aware of the fairy, but that's all we ever hear of it. The tale of the man and the fairy is never mentioned after chapter one, not even as a local legend or anything. But that's a minor thing, really. So, moving on, Kahoko isn't allowed to withdraw from the competition, so she soon meets the other competitors. There's Kazuki, an upbeat trumpet player whose first priority is having fun. Azuma specializes in the flute. He's easily the most popular of the group, complete with his own fan club, but there's something about him that's just a little too perfect, as Kahoko soon learns. Shoko is the only other girl. She plays the clarinet, and her most notable trait is that she's shy and quiet. Keiichi quickly became my favorite character. He plays the cello, and he's very dedicated, to the point where he'll lose track of time and stay up practicing all night. Because of this, he's almost always in a daze or actually asleep, but he's very honest and blunt, and he made me laugh more than any other character. Then there's Len, the other violinist, because you knew there had to be one, who has a much easier time understanding music than he does people. Len takes the competition the most seriously, and his first priority is winning. Now, these six make up the original competitors, but there is one more noteworthy character. His name is Ryotaro, and he's another gen ed student Kahoko befriends early on. He's often described as the stereotypical jock, but what are the chances? Turns out his mother's a piano teacher and he's never missed a lesson. I mentioned that there's a bit of a rivalry between the music students and the gen ed students. During the first stage, Kahoko's accompanist bails on her, so Ryotaro steps up for her. 
After that, the people in charge name him the seventh competitor, and then our group is finally complete. So I've kind of jumped around a lot with this review. In case you didn't notice, this series does fit the bill of a reverse harem, so there is some romance involved eventually. I'm not a huge fan of romance, but I do really like how they handle the love story aspect of this series. Having just introduced the characters, and if you know anything about what makes a prime candidate for a love triangle, it should be pretty obvious from Volume 1 who the serious competitors are when it comes to the love story. But Kahoko does connect with all of the other musicians on some level. I wouldn't call it love for all of them, but there is a definite connection, and it's done in a way that I felt was believable. She spends enough time with each of the characters for there to be an attachment, and for different reasons with each one. I haven't really looked into them, really only enough to see that they weren't translated into English, but the La Corda de Oro manga is based off a game series. I have to assume the games are at least a little akin to a dating game where you can play through each character's story, so it would make sense that there is the material for it if she were to potentially fall in love with each guy, but I know those sorts of things don't always translate well from one medium to another, so I just wanted to stress what a good job I felt they did in developing each of the characters. It would have been really easy to overlook some of them. There are a few characters I would like to discuss more in detail, but let's get back to the main story for a second. Kahoko was given a magic violin, but it still only works as long as she's feeling really passionate about the music. Which is cheesy, I know, but I'm kind of a sucker for that sort of thing. This whole story is about loving music and how all the characters play for different reasons. The manga series runs for 17 volumes, but the competition that brings them all together wraps up in volume 10. What, you might be wondering, could they possibly do with the remaining 7 volumes? This is the only real story spoiler I'll give you. The magic only lasts for so long, and by the end of the final stage, Gahoko's violin breaks. However, by this time, Lili has succeeded in his mission, and she's come to genuinely love music. So our heroine dedicates herself to learning to play the violin for real this time. And I really like that they kept her focus on music. She's not continuing to play because she thinks her new friendships will fall apart if she doesn't, and I could easily have seen them going that route. She continues to play because she genuinely loves the violin. The love story really took a back seat until the final few volumes, and I think that was the right choice so kudos to the writers for knowing where to keep their focus. Now, there were a few characters I wanted to discuss in more detail. One is Shoko. All the way up through the final volume, she keeps appearing as part of the group, and all the way up through the final volume, she continues to be really forgettable. She's likable enough, she just doesn't seem to have a place in the story like the rest of the characters do. No one ever questions her presence when the seven of them are all together, but there are plenty of times where the other six are off on some little adventure and Shoko's absence isn't even worth mentioning. She just doesn't have much purpose in this story. I would have liked to see her character fleshed out more. And then there's Azuma. If Keiichi was my favorite, then Azuma had to be my least favorite, but I liked his storyline the best, if that makes sense. And here are the only character spoilers you'll get from me. So I mentioned in his introduction that Azuma was just a little too perfect, as these types of characters tend to be, but I really liked how they addressed this. After a while, Kahoko learns that when it's just the two of them alone together, Azuma can be just plain cruel. He mocks her dedication and basically holds over her head that he could make her school life a living hell if she ever were to do something to really annoy him, what with the kind of sway he has over the other students, and who are people more likely to believe, really. They don't take that particular threat as far as they could, but the intention is there. We learn that Azuma comes from a family that doesn't value music much, and his grandmother is equally harsh, if not more so, with him. 
I think it's safe to say that he's taking his anger out on Kahoko because he can't stand up to his grandmother. Azuma's story kind of just resolves itself. We never see her blow up at him or expose him as the asshole he secretly is, but I was still satisfied. Azuma learns to take control of his own life, and Kahoko is more of an influence than an active presence in his story. Which leads me to discuss our main protagonist, at least a little. I feel like her lack of retaliation when it comes to Azuma would lead some to the conclusion that she's one of those characters who's just abnormally Disney princess nice. You know, always cheerful, never holds anything against anyone, and that's not really the case. If I'm right about the game series being a dating game, then that would make Kahoko the self-insert character, and she's not bland or overly perfect like those characters tend to be. I feel she reacted realistically to every other situation that was thrown her way. The confrontations with Azuma just brought up another point of conflict with her. It's hard for her to defend herself, because around this point, she starts to really analyze whether she deserves to be competing with them. By this point, she's had enough time to really appreciate how much time and effort everyone else puts into their music, and she starts to feel ashamed for competing with magic. Of course, it's not something she has long to linger on, because pretty soon the magic leaves her anyway, but it's something I'm glad they addressed. That's about it for the manga review. The story for this one wasn't exactly complex, it was the characters that drew me in. They each had distinct personalities that showed through in everything they said. If there was one downfall to reading the manga, it was that they were really limited with what they could do with the music. There were footnotes at the end of each volume, giving background on each of the songs, and whenever a character was really wrapped up in one of their performances, they would usually get a full-page illustration. So the feeling was there as much as it could be, but obviously there's always going to be something missing in a story about music when you can't actually hear anything. But the good news there is that an anime was made too, which I plan to watch if at all possible. So until then, or whatever I review next, thank you for watching.